Michael, who is here to uh, present to us anything we need to know about financial aid. Okay, of course, you know, to pay for college, we have types of um, loans, we have grants, we have LOSPA, your LOSPA scholarships, all that information. Of course, you're not at school, most of you. So any question you have about the FSA ID, now is the time to ask because you know you don't see us too often and you don't get to talk to your counselors too often. So please do not hesitate to ask any questions you have. You are your parent, okay? So Ms. Carmichael is gonna get started. She's gonna talk to us a little bit and then she's gonna answer any questions you have, all right? Okay. All right, thank you so much for having me. I wanna go over a couple of housekeeping um, items first. I have um, turned everyone's video and audio off so that we're not distracted. So if you see that your video or your audio are on, um, please turn those off. And we're going to communicate tonight by using the Zoom chat box. That will be down at the bottom on your toolbar. Um, and you can just drop your questions in there as we move through the presentation. And then I'll answer them at the end as well. So I'll pull up our, my presentation. We still have people entering the room, so be patient. We'll let them in as we move through. Okay, I'm Ann Carmichael, as we just mentioned, and I am a student financial aid consultant with LELA. And hopefully when the presentation is over this evening, you will understand a lot more about the financial aid process. But this presentation is gonna be available to you. I'm gonna um, posted on our YouTube channel, and I'm going to tell you where to find it. And I'm also going to provide a copy to your counselor. I'm available on our FAFSA helpline, and I'm available at this email address. You see it on the first um, page of my presentation. So um, always feel free to give me a call if you need to discuss something. As I'm sure uh, your counselor has told you, the Louisiana Department of Education is asking that the whole class of 2021 submit the free application for federal student aid. And this is a graduation requirement. The reason that they're doing this is to make sure that when and if you decide to go on to college after you graduate from high school, that your money is there waiting for you and you are ready to go. You don't have to worry about paying for it. It can be expensive and there are costs that you need to be aware of and start preparing for. Um, and these include your equipment, books and supplies like um, your notebooks and calculators and things of those sorts, your um, textbooks. Personal expenses like your phone bill, money for your laundry, fuel for your car and your food purchases, room and board, which could mean an apartment uh, or a dorm room. And that would include in your apartment, electricity, water and gas and groceries, cleaning supplies, anything you see mom and dad um, paying for, you will be paying for when you get to college if you have your own place. And tuition and fees. Those include parking, your library, technology and athletic fees, and your campus transportation. The good news is that there is a variety of, there are a variety of sources to um, pay for college. The federal government, our state government in the form of the TOPS scholarship, 
your college and career schools have money available for you, and then nonprofit and private organizations like LELA. Every year, the federal government awards over $120 billion in student financial aid. And a lot of that goes unawarded. So we all just wanna make sure that you are getting your portion. The types of federal student aid include the federal Pell Grant, the federal Supplemental Education Opportunity Grant, the Teacher Educational Assistance for College and Higher Education Grant, the Iraq and Afghanistan Service Grant, federal work study, and then direct subsidized, unsubsidized, and plus loans. Federal student aid grants are a form of financial aid that does not have to be repaid. So get familiar with the different grants. They are the Pell Grants for undergraduates with financial need, FSEOGs for undergraduates with exceptional financial need, and then your service grant for military parents and teach grants for students who are planning to uh, planning a teaching career. There's the federal work study program and it provides part-time jobs to help pay for your education expenses. So when you tell the financial aid office that you're interested in federal work study, they're going to consider you for this program. You'll be paid directly and you will use this money to help pay for your college expenses. And the beauty of this program is that this can reduce the amount of money that you will have to borrow for your education. Then comes the loans. There are direct subsidized loans and these are based on financial need. No interest is charged on these loans while the student is in school. And then there are the unsubsidized loans, which almost everyone is eligible for. But on this type of loan, you're going to be responsible for that interest and it's gonna accrue while you're in school and then after you graduate. So there's a big difference you can see between the direct subsidized loans and the unsubsidized loans. You always want to accept the subsidized before the unsubsidized. And you can remember this by this memory tip. The U in unsubsidized means that you always pay the interest. And that's something that you want to avoid. If you are offered student loans to help pay your tuition, you need to make sure you're accepting the federal student loans before the private loans. The federal student loans have a lower interest rate you don't have to pay them until you graduate or cease to attend and no credit check is required. But the federal, the private student loans, the interest rate is often much higher and you could be asked to begin paying it while you're in school and you most often are going to have to have a co-signer. So make sure you're doing your research if you do have to borrow through a private lender because interest rates and those incentives to borrow money from them is going to vary. So you see everybody is eligible for some type of federal student aid and all student aid and most institutional and private aid is contingent upon the completion of the FAFSA, the free application for federal student aid. And as you're probably aware, it launched on October 1st. It's available every October 1st. And remember that this has to be renewed every year that you're going to be in college. Student financial aid is awarded on a first come first served basis. So the sooner you complete your FAFSA, the better, because these monies could run out. Also remember to pay close attention to your FAFSA deadlines and meet all of your college, state government and federal student aid deadlines. And I'm sure your high school counselor is going to ask you to submit your FAFSA before a certain date as well. So make sure you're making note of all of that. Students and parents need to have their, uh, all of these documents available before you start your FAFSA. It'll make the process go so much easier and those documents include the student and parents' social security cards, 
because the FSA ID and the FAFSA have to reflect the name and numbers exactly as printed on your card. You don't want to guess and somebody else end up with your federal student aid. You need to have your federal income tax returns um, for the student and the parents because the IRS data retrieval tool wants your name and address exactly as printed on your tax return. Now, if you don't file a return or you don't have a copy of your return, that is a different situation. If you need to talk to your tax preparer to get a duplicate copy from 2019, you'll wanna go ahead and do that. The W-2s, because there's information here that might not be found on your tax return. So make sure you have your W-2s. This is the statement that your employer gives you at the end of each year and shows all of your earnings and then deductions that they've made. And then your bank statements and records of investments because you have to report your balances on these accounts as of the date that you submit the FAFSA. You'll wanna begin by creating the federal student aid ID because this allows the parents and the student to identify themselves electronically when they're accessing federal student aid websites like the FAFSA. And it consists of a username and password that you're gonna be asked to create. And it should only um, reflect your personal information. Don't put any mo of mom and dad's information in yours and vice versa. Be careful not to share mobile phone numbers. It has to be strictly your information. Each student and one of their parents should create an ID. Um, and then here's the website, fsaid.ed.gov. Make sure you're going to the correct federal website. And remember that the ID is your, your official electronic signature. So record it, keep it in a safe place and don't share it with anybody else. If you don't have access to a computer, download the FAFSA mobile app called My Student Aid to submit your FAFSA on your mobile phone or any device with internet access. Or you can complete the FAFSA using the web-based version at fafsa.gov. Begin the FAFSA by logging in with the student's FSA ID because the FAFSA is the student's application for federal student aid. Now the parent FSA ID will be used later to transfer your information from your tax return into the FAFSA and also to sign the student's FAFSA. The high school class of 2021 should be completing the 2021-2022 FAFSA because that is the academic year that you're applying for financial aid. And this can be confusing because we are in the 2020-2021 academic year, but this is for your college financial aid. There are eight sections that need to be completed before you submit your FAFSA, and those include the student demographic section, school selection, dependency status, parent demographics, parent and student financials, then it's time to sign and submit and review your confirmation page. As you move through the FAFSA, if you have a question about the question, you see the question mark over to the right-hand side of each of these questions, there's one beside every FAFSA question. So if you're not sure about what they want in that field, just press the question mark and you'll have a list of helpful tips. There are hyperlinks provided um, in this form. You can request a FAFSA online chat and a federal student aid representative will be online with you to answer as you're moving through the form. You can call them or you can call me at Leela's FAFSA helpline. And we're all here to make sure that you get through the process. But for this session, I'm only gonna cover the most commonly asked FAFSA questions 
And as I mentioned, you can drop your questions that I don't address tonight in the chat box, and I'll go over those at the end of the presentation. Now the citizenship requirement. A student must be a citizen of the United States or an eligible non-citizen. And when you're in the form, if you're not sure what an eligible non-citizen is, there's a description there. You just check up, click on that hyperlink and it will be um, described to you. Now, if a, if a student is a citizen or an eligible non-citizen, but his parents are not, that's fine. That student can still submit a FAFSA, but those parents will be asked to enter zeros anywhere a social security number is asked for. Only the colleges that you list on the FAFSA in the school selection section will all will consider you for student financial aid. So make sure that you are um, jotting down all of the schools that you're considering. You can add up to 10 at a time. And if you're applying to more than 10 colleges, there are instructions here on the school selection section to help you add more than 10 schools. This is a big one. People aren't quite sure if they're considered dependent or independent. I know we all feel independent when we become 18, but for FAFSA purposes, you'll be asked to consider these 10 questions. Will you be 24 or older by January 1st of the school year for which you're applying for financial aid? Are you married or separated but not divorced? Will you be working on a graduate degree? Do you have children who receive more than half of their support from you? Do you have dependents other than children or a spouse who live with you and receive more than half of their support from you, perhaps a relative or a family friend? Are you currently serving on active duty in the US Armed Forces? for purposes other than training. So this is going to exclude boot camp and basic training. Are you a veteran of the US Armed Forces? At any time since you turned 13, were both of your parents deceased? Or were you in foster care? Or were you a ward or dependent of the court? Are you an emancipated minor? Or are you in legal guardianship as determined by a court? And legal custody is not always considered legal guardianship. So students make sure that you are reviewing those documents with your um, guardians or with your parents um, to make sure you understand this question and answer it correctly. Are you an unaccompanied youth who's homeless? Are you self-supporting or at risk of being homeless? If you can answer yes to just one of these 10 questions and provide a legal document supporting your claim, then you're considered an independent student for FAFSA purposes and you will not be required to provide parental information. For FAFSA purposes, you're not cons considered an independent simply because you file your own taxes or live alone and support yourself. Unfortunately, you still will be asked to provide parental information. And the biggest question we're asked, who, which parent do I report on my FAFSA? So basically the parent or the parents that you've lived with the longest in the past 12 months should be listed on your FAFSA. If you live with both of your biological parents, that's easy, you're gonna list both of them. But if the parent you've lived with the longest in the past 12 months is separated, divorced, or was never married, you should, live, you should list that parent on your FAFSA. Now, if that parent's remarried, you'll have to include that parent's spouse as well. In other words, federal student aid wants to know the financial standing 
of the household that the student has lived in the longest in the 12 months prior to the date that the FAFSA was submitted. If you're identified as a dependent student, but both of your parents refuse to provide their information on your FAFSA, you're simply going to state, I'm unable to provide parental information. I don't have a special circumstance. And then go ahead and uh, submit your FAFSA without parental information. But please remember to contact your, kind, your financial aid office to let them know what's going on because they can override what federal student aid suggests and they can use their own professional judgment to award you additional financial aid. To expedite the processing of your federal student aid, you should attempt to use the IRS data retrieval tool. This is pretty new. It's been available for the last two or three years. You can actually move from your FAFSA form into the IRS website, grab the information that they want in your FAFSA and give the IRS permission to load it into your FAFSA. Not only is it a lot simpler, it cuts the, uh, the form uh, filling time probably in half. It's going to um, decrease your chances of being selected for verification at the financial aid office. So attempt to use this form and if you have trouble using it, you can always contact Federal Student Aid or give me a call on the on Lila's FAFSA helpline and I'll help you out. So once you uh, select the IRS data retrieval tool and you agree to use it, your, that, this is where your 2019 income tax return is going to come into play. You need to have that in front of you because whatever's on that form needs to put, be put here on the IRS site. Um, even if your name has changed since you filed your 2019 return, it's maybe it's misspelled. We've had incidences where their tax preparer mis misspelled their name. You have to type exactly what is on that return. And even if you've moved since then, So remember, you're now at the sign and submit page. You want to make sure before you go any further that you are reviewing your student aid report. This is a report that reflects every question that you were asked when completing the FAFSA and shows your answer to each of those. By reviewing this report, you are making sure that before you submit it to your 10 colleges and perhaps more than that, that this information is correct so that your financial aid is not held up because of some errors that you may accidentally have made. And as I mentioned before, dependent students must sign and have one parent sign. This is where your FSA ID is going to come into play. If you submit your FAFSA without signatures, you're going to be alerted every week from federal student aid that you need to log back into your FAFSA, update it, and resubmit it. Once you do submit your FAFSA, make sure that you're taking a long look at the confirmation page. This will tell you what steps you're going to need to take next to complete the student financial aid process. It'll show you a list of the colleges that will receive your FAFSA data. You can review your estimated expected family contribution, and you can consider your financial aid estimates. And remember, these dollar amounts are simply estimates. They're based on the answers that you gave to the FAFSA, que to the FAFSA questions, because the financial aid office is going to review all of this information, and they may have to verify some of it before awarding you your aid. Once your FAFSA is fully processed, it's shared with your colleges, then those colleges will begin to identify any financial aid, grants, scholarships, student loans that you might be eligible for on their campus. 
If your family financial situation has changed since 2019, if somebody's lost a job and we are going to see a lot of this this year with all the, with the situation that's been going on um, with this pandemic, if somebody's lost a job or had a reduction in um, hours or say, say a parent has passed on, you can work individually with the financial aid office at your colleges. They can use their own judgment and award you additional financial aid. So make sure you're making contact with each of them if you have a special situation. And this is how they're going to um, determine the net price of your education. They're going to take their cost of attendance. They're going to subtract from that any grants or scholarships that they can offer you. And that's going to determine your net price. And your net price can be paid in cash or by accepting student loans to pay that balance. Your student financial aid offer is going to come from each of your colleges and it should reflect the college's cost of attendance, grants and scholarships, work study, and any student loans that you've been offered. So make sure you're reviewing each one carefully and you're responding to any requests that they might make of you, of you so that they can go ahead and process your federal student aid. You'll want to accept your financial aid in this order. Scholarships and grants, because this is gift aid that does not have to be repaid. Federal work study is earned money that does not have to be paid back. And then student loans. This is borrowed money and it must be repaid with interest. So be careful about your student loans. The student financial aid process is explained in Leela's um, FAFSA completion guide and workbook for the class of 2021. And it's a free resource for Louisiana high school students. Um, I don't know if your counselor has uh, distributed our electronic copy to you, but if you want to drop me an email, I'll Put my email address up again at the end of the session and I'll be happy to send your copy over to you. Use our senior checklist to stay on track this year and I will include a copy of this when I send your guide over as well. Most importantly, scholarships. These are gifts that don't have to be repaid and there are thousands of them. They're offered by schools and employers and nonprofits, professional and social organizations. Some are merit-based, awarded on your academic achievement or talents or traits or interests that you might have. And others are based on financial aid. Um, a scholarship could cover the entire cost of your tuition or it could be a one-time award of just a few hundred dollars, but either way it's worth applying for because it's going to reduce the cost of your education. And you can find out about these scholarships from your high school counselor or from your college financial aid office. This year, Leela, the organization that I work with, offers two scholarship opportunities. One is a $1,000 FAFSA completion scholarship for seniors who are attending Louisiana High School. And the other is a $1,000 Choose Louisiana scholarship for students who are already in a Louisiana college. And you can go to our website, leela.org, for the scholarship application and for the details um, of the scholarship. And for students or parents, who need some additional funding to help pay for college. Once you've maxed out all your other opportunities, um, we do have a nonprofit loan product, but you do need to make sure that this is uh, something that you're serious about. You need to be very careful about accepting student loans. But this loan is your lowest um, interest opportunity and it's called leelachoice.org. Your questions are always welcome. So now's the time to go ahead and drop those in the chat box below. 
and I'll answer those with the time we have remaining. If you do prefer and you want to speak to me directly, you can call me at Leela's FAFSA helpline listed here or contact me on at this email address, carmichael at leela.org. Let me go down here and take a look at the chat box. We have quite a few questions. Oh, somebody asked me to show slide two again. I will go back and do that in just a minute, but I'll also be happy to send those to you. Oh, you're putting your names in. That's great. Yes, you can call me at any time. Let me go back to slide number two. Here's the helpline if you want to give me a call. Let me go back to slide number two. Is everybody comfortable with who's who to report on their FAFSA as the parent? Has anybody had any problems creating the FSA ID? I'm wondering if this is my slide number two, is this the one that you all wanted to see? Oh, you're very welcome. I'm happy to be here and help you out. Okay, Ms. Brooks, did you wanna say anything else before we finish up? Uh, can you put your number back up again? I think it was too fast, maybe. I sure will. Also, most people did put their um, names in chat. If you uh -huh. want to be certain I have an account of your name, make sure you put it there. I didn't see all names in chat. And Kaczynski, if you're listening, I think you had a problem with a parent signature, maybe. If you want to ask, can they unmute themselves if they want to speak? If you want to unmute, yes. Let's, I hope we're not all going to talk at the same time, but definitely I would love to hear you tell me about your issue. I had a problem with logging in my account. Did you have a, did you already create your FSA ID, but then you couldn't log into it? Okay. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. I had set up my account, but when I um, tried to log in, it wouldn't let me log in. So what I would do if I were you, I would go back to that FSA ID website, and there are two options create an ID or manage my ID. Go to manage my FSA ID and just log back in again and make sure all your information is correct. If you're having problems and you still can't get in, why don't you give me a call on the FAFSA helpline and I'll stay on the line with you while you're going through the process. Okay, thank you. Does anybody else have anything they want to um, discuss? You may want to save that number in your cell phones just in case you need to ask Ms. Carmichael a question one on one if you feel more comfortable talking with her one on one. I would be happy to work with you individually. Thank you so much, Ms. Carmichael. You're welcome. This is what the guide looks like, our electronic guide. Can everybody see this? 
And I will post that in Google Classroom on tomorrow. Good. And I'll send you the, I'm going to actually put this presentation on our YouTube channel. It's called Ask Leela. And I will um, have it there for you in the morning. Okay, thank you. And thank you guys for tuning in tonight. Yes. And here's one more question. I think we have another one. Oh, okay, good. All righty. And I think I have most of you, your names. I think that's it. All right. Thank you so much for having me. And I'm looking forward right. to receiving your scholarship applications and hearing from you. All right. Thank you. Good night. You're welcome. Good night.